Good day, folks, and thank you for joining me for another shave. Today's soap of choice is going to be Fine's American Blend. This is another popular fragrance from their lineup of soaps and splashes. They're probably most known for this fragrance and the Platinum fragrance, and so those are the two I've chosen to review thus far. There's plenty more. This is the one I'm gonna be reviewing today. Had the soap blooming, just emptied the water. My brush of choice today is going to be my hair cut and shave company barber pole brush with a 24 millimeter tuxedo. Already wet and rinsed it out, ready to go. Just dump the water out. One of the things I just wanted to share with you real quick, these are the new tubs offered by Fine. You probably saw that on my last video. But if you take a look inside, it's got a nice marker of the Fine insignia there. It's actually embedded on the soap. The only, my only gripe with this soap is that there's actually a lot of additional room in the tub. So if it's not matted down by the water, when you're blooming it, the soap, the water actually gets underneath the soap, which causes a lot of gooey stickiness. And then there's a lot of excess space around. So it's not snug against the walls of the actual tub itself. And so um, to me, it's nice that it's there. It's another strikeout for fine as far as packaging goes. We started with boxes, then ceramic bowls, and then these little tubs. They still don't seem to quite fit the bill, but they work. So I'm gonna go ahead and load that up. It's just a little thought. Before I got this thing all soapy and foamy and you couldn't see it, I thought I would share that with you. So to me, um, there's some really good things Fine could do. They make great fragrances. The soap lathers up like a dream. It's tallow-based. It feels great. The splashes are wonderful. Everything about them is great. But for whatever reason, they just they seem to be annoyed by the thought of packaging. And so we'll see. The boxes are cool in which they come, and a lot of people have came up with inventive ways to store it or to place it in other containers, but there you have it. So in this video, I'm not gonna give you a lot of history on Fine and some of the other things. If you go back to my, uh, back to my Platinum video I did on Fine Platinum, which is a Creed Aventus dupe, um, I gave a lot of history on Fine, their operation, how they work, their relationship with West Coast Shaving, all those different things. So I don't want it to be redundant. I just wanna speak more to the fragrance itself and like I said in the beginning, Platinum and American Blend are probably their two most popular scents. They have Italian Citrus, Green Vetiver, vetiver Fresh Vetiver, Lavender, uh, Snake Bites, Santel Absolute. What, I feel like I'm missing something. If I am, I'll think of it, but those are most of their lines, most of their fragrances. All the soaps that they have, all the splashes that they offer. And back in the day, they used to offer a clean vetiver, which to me was absolutely amazing. I still have a flask of that, I have a, it's almost full. And that's been replaced with green vetiver, which in my opinion is not as good, but it's okay. So loading this up pretty good here. And like I said, the puck itself can tend to be a little mobile inside the tub, it's a little bit annoying. But the scent is amazing on this. So American Blend is a barbershop scent. And if you've ever smelled CAD by PAA, it's a very citrusy barbershop type of scent. It's citrusy, powdery. It's kind of a good fusion of all those different things that make a barbershop scent really good. It smells really nice. I like it. I'm gonna add a little more water. I think the soap dried out, just, or not the soap, but the actual brush itself dried out a little bit. I'm gonna add just a bit more just to get this thing going to the degree that I know it can go. I think I may have a good load there. I'm gonna add a little bit more water. So it just seems to be a little bit dry. But like with most fine scents, the scent is just protruding. It's leaping out of the tub. It's really great. It's one of those fragrances that'll fill up your bathroom. But to me, as far as barbershop scents goes, this is about as classy and masculine as it gets. It's really, really nice. Load just a little bit more in there. Seems to be a little bit finicky, maybe because it's evening and not morning. All right, I'm gonna try to go with that. See what I get out of this. Because I have a few other items I'd like to share with you. And 
I really like where my growth is at today. I think it's a couple of days. Can't remember if I shaved on Thursday or Friday. I wanna say Thursday was my last shave. I'm taking all this excess lather, nice and thick. Let's see if I can produce as good of a lather as I did with that Samoa brush last time. Who knows? But I wanted some substantial growth for this video and you'll see why in a second. I do have some new shave tech I'd like to share with you. So this brush is it's a nice brush for what it is. You can get it on Amazon. But I gotta tell you, this past year I've really delved into the world of synthetics and I've really gotten to see what's out there, what's available. And there's so many great synthetics that to me are much better than some of the bargain item synthetics that are available. So there was a time, and maybe it's just me right now, that I was really in love with this brush. And it's worked pretty good in the past. And again, some of what I might be experiencing right now might be due to the fact that that puck, the way it's placed in the tub, can tend to be mobile. And I thought I felt a little bit of mobility in there as I was lathering it up, which may cause some issues as the puck is shifting around and you're trying to lather off the puck. It is getting nice and pasty now, which means I need to add a little bit more water. But as far as face fill goes, um, there's much better synthetic. So the West Coast Shaving Synthetic that I've been telling you folks about, the, the yellow handle one, the Topaz, with the new Tuxedo Knot, that thing is amazing. And this thing's coming around. But I don't know that I would put this up in my top synthetics. It's got quite a bit of backbone, but it is a little bit springy. And I was hoping that with this synthetic, that this lathering process would go a little bit faster than it's going. I'm gonna add a ton of water to this, and then what we get is what we get. It's coming together pretty good. but not quite to the extent to where I want it. I like that nice volume. But the other thing, the other component that comes into all this, because this is coming together pretty good. The other component that comes into this is the formula itself. And I've learned over time of where the max capacity of the formula is on a certain soap based on the artisan or based on the mass produced company, whatever the case may be, or rather that it's a company that does a mass produced product, maybe globally. And this stuff came out okay. It's going pretty good. But since I've been introduced to some other knots this year, um, some that West Coast Shaving offers, others that I've been introduced to through artisans, this is a decent brush, a decent knot, but certainly not my favorite. All right, that came together pretty good. Now that we've spent 10 minutes lathering and bantering, let's get into the hardware. 
So this is today's razor of choice. I just picked it up from West Coast Shaving. I've heard a lot of good rave reviews about this, and this is the Fine Marvel. And as you can see, it's got um, the really forgiving base plates here. It's got a very thick, comfortable base plate is what I've been told. If you can see real close there, I'm not gonna go too deep into it because Abraham from West Coast Shaving already did a nice review on this. But you can kind of see that blade gap there. I don't know if it'll focus in or not, but there's a really, really nice blade gap there. It's, it's supposed to be aggressive, but the premise of this razor was, according to what Fine was trying to accomplish, was to create a more efficient, aggressive razor. So in other words, most aggressive razors tend to be uncomfortable at times and you have to be extremely careful. This was designed to be both comfortable and aggressive at the same time without sacrificing efficiency. So let's see how that works. It's not a, uh, a stainless steel razor. It's about $40. It's very economy priced. Um, I think it looks great aesthetically. Um, it definitely is a $40 razor when you look at it, but it is a chrome plated razor. It's not a stainless steel razor. Pretty nice. So you can hear the audible feedback, I hope. I can feel the blade a little bit. thing does sing and it really is not difficult at all to find the angle and I've watched probably three or four reviews maybe three on this razor they've all been favorable and I can see why but it's kind of a an oxymoron it's mildly aggressive, so I, I can feel the comfort on it, but I can also tell that it's an aggressive razor. So when you're using it, you can feel that you're just an inch away from making a mistake and cutting yourself, but you don't do it. And this is definitely not a razor, if you've watched any of my previous videos, that I would do an against the grain pass with. I'm probably going to do an angled side pass on both sides and not go up because I think I'm going to end up taking my lip with me. All right. Really nice. So this base plate does really help. It does really assist with the reduction on the aggression or reducing it rather. But let's see how well I do. I end up with a lot of weepers, then I don't know what I'm doing. But I've already got myself near the same spot I always do. So when I get myself, I get myself right here because I kind of have like a protruding chin and I got to kind of come at an angle to get in there. And I always get myself right there for some reason. And with this razor, it happened again. All right, going back to this. See, once this video is going, it's going. There's no turning back. But this stuff is pretty great. The scent is great. In the last couple of videos, I got a few minor weepers and they healed up in the course of the shave. So I'm hoping this thing does the same thing. But you can definitely feel that this is an aggressive razor and there is a pretty significant blade gap.
Now, for whatever reason, I couldn't remember the name of the metal that they actually use on this. It's not an expensive metal and it is chrome plated to kind of add to the, the aesthetics of the brush. But oh yeah. So yeah, I think if you do practice with this and dial it down, you could probably use this with some regularity. But even with that safety bar there, you do need to be a little careful. I can feel the blade, um, but not in an uncomfortable way, if that makes sense. In the past, when I was new to wet shaving and I was trying every razor that everybody recommended, I ended up with a lot of aggressive razors, razors with significant blade exposure, significant blade gaps, and you can feel it. It's almost like using a straight razor. So I can tell you that by this bar alone, it does reduce the aggression. It does reduce the chances of you getting cut by, I wanna say maybe 25, 30%. It's not a lot more. I could still feel like, again, I could tell that if I make one minor mistake, I'm gonna cut myself pretty bad. And more so than I would in my Edwin Jagger or my Mercur 34C or razors like that, where there is a little bit of forgiveness But this is probably one of the more um, efficient models of an aggressive razor that I've used so far. Where it's not just all out blade exposure and me scraping my face with a paper thin blade. So let's rinse it off, go for the third path. Because time is a ticking. So. Again, for the price and for what it is, if you're into aggressive razors, or you just wanna challenge yourself, or you're looking for the most comfortable iteration of an aggressive razor, this one's pretty good. Not too shabby, definitely one of the more comfortable versions. I've had, like I said, aggressive razors in the past, and most of them I've piffed or sold. And that's that. So I've kept all the razors. Like I said, for those of you guys that know me well, I prefer comfort over challenges in the morning. And there's some guys that are really, really good with aggressive gear, be it a straight razor, be it a DE razor. Some guys are just really good with it. So that's wonderful. But I just, you know, one of those things where time is always of the essence for me. All right. I hesitate to go against the grain, well, let's see. If you guys can hear that. And just to take the attention off of the fact that I may cut myself here, um, going back to the scent, it's a really nice masculine scent. It does kind of transport you back to that nostalgic vintage era of barbershops maybe even back to the Western era. But it's a very classic barbershop scent and it's very good. And it's very pronounced. And it's a nice fusion of that powdery, citrusy, cologne type scent. But there is something nostalgic about it. And it's an also, it's a very masculine scent. And as you can tell, I'm not as poetic with scents as some guys are. Some guys can smell something and recite a Shakespearean sonnet for you about how it smells. And 
I'm just not there, but I do get those notes from it. And like I said, it is just, when I smell it, there's something very vintage about it. Well, if you ever talk to somebody about fine products, the two, that, the two scents that they offer that typically come up in conversation are Platinum and American Blend. And fun fact for you, neither of those are my favorite. There are so many guys out there that love Platinum. It's a Creed Adventist dupe. And I know Nick Shaves loves it. Other guys that love it. It's not my favorite. I do like it. I do own it. This is really dangerous, folks. I gotta say though, this hasn't been too bad. Now, I didn't go against the grain on my mustache and it got it pretty good. It's actually a lot closer than it would be if I just used an Edwin Jagger or my 34C or a milder version of this razor. I know Fine in the past, this might be their third razor, I think, their second or third. I know they did a slant before. And I can't remember for the life of me if there was another one. And I think that slant was like a bake light. It had like no weight to it. And back in the day, um, when Fine was at the height of their popularity, I know a lot of people picked that razor up. You know what, folks? I don't even need to do my cleanup pass. But as you can see, I got myself. Very surface cuts, very short. I mean, it could tell they're gonna clean up or, or heal up real quick. One tiny one there, one there, one there. But nothing major. But I gotta tell you, that did exactly what it was purported to do, which was to give you an efficient shave with more aggression. So again, I think the premise of that razor was to provide efficiency without sacrificing comfort and to help you get your shave done in less passes, which it did. Normally I still feel some excess stubble around where I need to go you know, on my cleanup pass against the grain this way, up here, do my double chin here. I am smooth. But as you can see, this is, the, this is what happens in the wet shaving world. Now I found a weeper there, one here, one here, and one here. So that's four weepers in one shave, which is not normal. So that shows you that the razor is a little bit aggressive. So I'm gonna have to go to the Allen block. But I can tell you that I, I do feel confident that I can get the handle on this one. I have had other razors where it's like, forget it. I don't even wanna go there with it. But this one, I can tell that um, just a few more, a few more shaves with it and I'll get the hang of it. So Abe, I can't remember if you cut yourself or not, but by virtue of that, you did a much better review. <laughs> the one below my neck or below my chin kind of healed up on its own. It appears. But this one here, Once in a while too, depending on the contours of your face, I've had weepers before where they don't seem to be stopping, even if they're just small on the surface ones. And sometimes it's just because of the contours, you gotta kind of come at your face at a different angle. Like that one. I'll give it a few seconds to dry up. So while that's doing its work, like I said, the, the razor itself, um, it's kind of what I expected it to be. I was told that you really couldn't feel the blade on it, but you can, but it's not as bad as other aggressive razors I've used with that type of blade gap on it. So for me, it's worth the pickup. It's worth you going out there and trying it. You may absolutely love it. This is probably one of the only aggressive razors I'll keep around, just for me. So, um, yeah, probably pretty good. Go ahead and splash the stuff off.
I usually try to give it 30 seconds or so for the alum to sit in. And there's a couple things with wet shaving that, you know, over time you get used to. Alum um, has very grippy properties to it. And so when you're wiping it on your face, even when you're wiping, after you're done applying it, you go to your face with the water, it makes your face very sticky, very skitty. And so that would happen there. But I will say, I did in three passes what it typically takes me four passes to do with this razor, and that's a good thing. All right, 25 minutes in. I'm on a mission, folks, to get these videos within 20 or less. And the brush gave me a little trouble during this video, so. Um, I mean, I go back to that brush again in the future. Like I said, it's not the softest version of that tuxedo and the purest versions of the tuxedo knot, like you saw with the West Coast shaving, they have a much wider top, so the tips of them are a lot more white, um, a little more vibrant, and the more copycat iterations are a little more gray. So this looks really white, but when it cleans up, you'll see um, it's a little grayer than the actual traditional tuxedo knot. And so what I just used there, I finished it up with the Fine American Blend Splash to go with the Fine American Blend Soap. So fine, you owe it to yourself when you're picking up the soap to get the matching splash. It does have good alcohol content, it's fragrant, and it's a very basic splash, but they do a very good job with the fragrance. So there's not a lot of skin nourishing properties in these particular splashes. Alcohol, water, fragrance, and menthol, that's it. So you get the nice soothing effect from the menthol, but there's really not a lot of skin nourishing properties in there, really actually none whatsoever. And so it's really more for the effect and it really just kind of tops off the shave itself. It gives you that nice fragrance, but that's really all you're gonna get with the splash. But the fragrance does last a bit. It is very pronounced and I can smell it. It's, my bathroom is filled with this fragrance. So again, American blend, matching splash, and I'll give this thing about an eight out of a 10. I like it. This is probably the only aggressive razor I'm going to keep around, but it did do what it was purported to do, what it was advertised to do, and I'm good with that. So, till next time, guys. God bless you. We'll see you soon.